When starting this video off by saying call Allah Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, we call Kadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and rule well. Shalom to the brothers out there preaching and teaching the truth worldwide. I want to say Shalom to the whole elect. Today's lesson is entitled, Does God Love Everyone? So right here I have this, uh, this is from the Fellowship Baptist Church. And this is a little, little article going into, uh, does God love everyone? So right here it says, does God love all people? This is a great question and one which we automatically snap out an answer to without even giving it much thought, which is true. Ask someone, does God love everybody? They're immediately going to say, yeah, God loves everybody. They're probably going to try to um, follow up with John 3.16, even though they don't have the true understanding of what John 3.16 is getting into. So out of the ignorance, you know what I'm saying, as the scriptures say, our people have a zeal for the most high, but not according to knowledge. So because they don't have the, the true knowledge, the understanding of the scriptures, they just instantly will blurt out John 3.16, God loves everybody. God knows my heart. <clears throat> you know, all these different cliches that our people <clears throat> have been brought up into saying, uh, especially those who subscribe to plantation Christianity. So, yes, of course, he does. He created us, therefore he loves us. Before we allow our own emotions to answer this question, however, which is true, see what I'm saying? So, he's saying the right thing. You shouldn't allow your own emotion to answer these questions. Maybe we should allow our God through his word answer for himself, which is true. But how, how do you how do you let the Lord uh, answer for himself with the scriptures, not your vain opinion? So as a missionary is sent to preach the gospel. So this guy was sent to preach the gospel. And we're going to get that in Luke 4 and um, 17. Since he said he's a missionary sent to preach the gospel, we're going to get the gospel um, what the Lord was sent to preach and who it was sent to be preached to. And I was recently asked this question in a manner of speaking by a church missions board. As I spent some time putting this together, I thought it might be helpful to a wider audience. Thus, I am making it available here. The question was posed like this. We were wondering about your theology of missions could you describe to us your view? But I thought he said he wanted to let uh, the Lord answer for himself through his word. So, but the way this question is posed, could you describe to us <clears throat> your view on whether or not God loves sinners if you were sitting across from an unbeliever who did not know God and was not safe, who was depressed and hopeless? And that person were to ask, does God love me? Could you respond positively and affirmatively? Yes, God loves you. Hmm. So right here, this guy was posed this question. Does the most high love love sinners? So, but I'm going to start up here. He says, as a missionary sent to preach the gospel. So <clears throat> we're going to get the, the, the number one missionary that was sent out to preach this gospel. Yahweh Shah himself. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start at Luke 4 and 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as, he, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah which is Isaiah, and we had, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. So this is the gospel, the good news. Let's see, is this good news to everybody? To preach the gospel to the poor. Right there, that just X out a whole class of people, the rich. If the gospel was sent to the poor, what about the rich people? See what I'm saying? So, does God love rich people? See what I'm saying? So, this is right here. It just X them out. It said, the gospel was sent to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, 
to preach deliverance to the captives. I'm talking about you so-called Negroes, Native American, Latinos. Right now, you don't have physical chains on you. But right now, this devil has your mind captivated. So I'm saying you don't know if you're coming or going with this devil, Esau, Edom. So I'm saying this, 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 this mental captivity is worse than that physical captivity that, that he had you under that, that, that hardcore bondage. And recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. <clears throat> and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting, fasting on him. So right there, that scripture just told you it wasn't this. He didn't preach this gospel to it wasn't for everyone. Let's let's analyze the scripture. It said the gospel was to the poor, to the brokenhearted, preached deliverance um, to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. So this this isn't this is an an, an, an all inclusive gospel. This isn't an all inclusive good news. This is only for for the people that that the scripture just said. So he he said he was he was asked this question, but the scripture didn't say that. What I just read that God loves everybody. He's, who this gospel was to the poor, brokenhearted, preached deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. See what I'm saying, as the scriptures say, <clears throat> for for the going to this blind, I got right here, Proverbs twenty one and sixteen. It said, the man that wanted out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregate congregation of the dead. So <clears throat> all of our people that subscribe into this plantation Christianity, right now they're blind. So I'm saying that right now they in the congreg congregation of the dead. The dead man walking. So I'm saying they, they don't have that breath of life. <clears throat> so hey, that, that's what um, the Lord has us. Um, his men out here, you know, uploading these lessons, doing lessons out on the street corner, preaching this gospel. See what I'm saying? To give sight to the blind. See what I'm saying? The priest that deliverance to the captives. <clears throat> so right here, I got <clears throat> showing you that, you know, God doesn't love everybody. I got Romans. 9 and 13, which is a classic scripture. As it is written, Jacob have I love, but Esau have I hated. That right there just told you, in a nutshell, God doesn't have love everybody. It said, Jacob have I love, Esau have I hated. And back it up, Malachi 1 and 2. <clears throat> I'm going to start at uh, Malachi 1 and 1. It says the burden of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yahweh, yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said Yahweh, yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. See what I'm saying? I'm going to read down one more, Malachi 1 and 4. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. See, not only does the Lord hate Esau, but he hates his whole heritage. He hates the whole nation of Edom because he, he left his whole, <clears throat> as the scriptures say, he left his whole heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. That's righteous anger. So how is it that, that the Lord loves everybody? See what I'm saying? We go into the scriptures. Found out something totally different when you actually crack open the Bible and start reading it for yourself. As the scriptures say, I got Ecclesiastes, uh, what's that, 12 and 6. Because 
Uh, I think the question was posed to him. Does the Lord love sinners? Ecclesiastes 12 and 6. Here's the answer. For the most high hated sinners. End of story. You ain't, you ain't got to give them no feel good message. If you, if you do good, you know, the Lord love you. You know what I'm saying? If you open the door for this elderly old woman, the Lord loves you. Now, nobody going to be an asshole. Just, you know, slam the door, see someone coming. You know, you go, you know, you at a uh, Kroger store or, or store that you got to open the door. You ain't going to like slam the door out. That's eat a mic behind me. No, hold the door open for them. Let them come in. But what the scriptures say, though, <clears throat> for the most high hate of sinners. Didn't say he loved sinners. He said for the most high hate of sinners and will repay vengeance unto the godly and keep it them against the mighty day of their punishment. Give unto the good and help not the sinner. So you ain't supposed to help the sinner. <laughs> See, plan takes Christian. You keep on taking L, man. <clears throat> I think I got <clears throat> yeah Psalms 78 and 49 but I'm going to read up a little bit alright so this is this is going into um, our deliverance talking about when we was uh, in the land of Egypt Psalms 78 and Got Psalm 78 and 43. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. And he had turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them and frogs, which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar. And their labor unto the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast, uh, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. So... If God loves everybody, why do he send evil angels among the Egyptians? I just read it. But people say God loves everybody. I just read you all this different destruction that um, the Heavenly Father sent among the Egyptians. And he sent evil angels. Told you that the Lord controls good and bad. If he sent evil angels among them, that's another lesson. So... Hopefully this lesson was edifying. Till next time, shalom.